Hello, my name is Didem Can. I am from Istanbul, Turkey. I am the member of NCGR and certified level four astrologer. English is not my first language. I will do my best. Please bear with me. NCGR is an astrology organization founded in 1971. The purpose of NCGR is to foster education, research, and publication of geocosmic nature with the main focus on astrology. NCGR has local chapter in the United States and around the world where astrologers of all levels can meet, share ideas, and learn together. NCGR is also pursuing a four-level astrology educational program equivalent to a four-year course at college level, which enables the students to obtain professional certification from its affiliate NCGR PAA. This lecture is geared towards the fundamentals of astrology and is part of the extensive online education courses and webinars that are regularly offered by NCGR. We all know the basis of astrological chart. Today, we are going to talk about houses. In a few words, I'm going to explain the idea where the houses comes from. The whole sphere of heaven is divided into four equal parts by meridian and horizon. And again, into three according to other circles drawn by points of sections of meridian and horizon. Each quadrant is further divided into three parts, which we call houses. In total, 12 houses beginning from the east. The first house starts with the ascendant. It's crossing point between horizon and the zodiac in the east. Therefore, the astrology represent. Therefore, the ascendant represent east. The role of the quadrant is the, to identify and um, support the supporting team of the houses, which we will explain shortly. This is the perspective that comes from motion of Earth. The sun rises from the east and culminates at noon time. If we liken the movement of the sun to human life, same as the person progress from childhood to adulthood, symbolically human nature is associated with the quadrants. The quadrant, which is described from the ascendant to the midheaven, refers to the early part of life, young adulthood. The quadrant, which is described from the midheaven to the descendant, refers to middle of life, the quadrant from the cusp of the seventh house to the IC, fourth house, describes years of maturity. The quadrant from the cusp of the fourth to the cusp of the first describes the old age of human life. This is someone uh, from the Middle East whose childhood passed during the war years of his country. He started to work uh, 15 years old. When he was 25 years old, he managed to put his company into the five top companies. When he was 35, the company was on the top. Just by looking at the planets, we can see what effects they will have at what age of our lives. This was the good example of this approach, the urinal motion of Earth. Yes, let's continue. We examine the nature of houses by dividing them into three categories. The first, seventh, seventh and fourth are called angles, angular houses. The eleventh, second, eighth and fifth houses are called succident houses. The third, twelfth, ninth and sixth are termed cadent houses. Angular houses are the most powerful houses Planets in angular houses manifest intensely and clearly. They are dynamic, action-oriented. The succident houses have a stabilizing effect, the cadent houses adapting to change. Let's continue with each of them. First house, it has signification of the life, body, mind, productivity, the beginning of everything and thoughts in one's mind. The house of personality, first impression, the establishment of personal identity, health, vitality, capacity to defeat the disease. It's the point that we born to the physical world. 
From that point on, we have to adapt to the environment where we were born. That's why it's the first impression. How we come across? We take the world into from ascendant and reflect our inner world to the outside from the ascendant with an attitude. All of us born into a unique family and we adapt their behaviors and beliefs and somewhere in the road, we leave them and try to find out our own way. It's the personality house. We have to find our identity. It may be the sun we have to realize in this life, but it's certain that we have to do it through the ascendant and first time house. Wherever we go, whatever we do, first house always determines our behaviors and how we respond to others. If we don't create a strong person, person I mean to use effectively the first house, the feeling of losing control of our own life will be overwhelming. This feeling is followed by fear and it's led by bullying others. We should always look the rising, rising sign and its nature of the ruler. If there's a planet on the ascendant or in the first house, we should combine them into interpretation. Let's go with the ex example here. I am unhappy and I will make everyone unhappy. This person who, is, who uh, has been married five times, she stands out with her aggressive attitude and abusive talk in the environment where she works. She is known for being jealous and competitive, first time areas. Four years ago, uh, the producer of her TV show said, we cannot keep her as a host of the show. She is like a ticking bomb. It's unclear when she'll say what. This will get us in trouble. Yes, we can only understand the successful first house by how it integrates with the rest of the chart. Ascendant ruler Mars is in Taurus. She was driven by the security and protecting what she has. Financial security is important to her. That's why her four marriages were wealthy men. As a debilitated ruler, Mars caused her trouble for her. She had deal with crisis. She couldn't cope with the flirtatious but rich man. When she was cheated, she became angry and aggressive. She was pretty spoiled at that time. At the end, she became magazine material and her reputation damaged. She was in the headlines throughout all marriages. Saturn in first house demands her to be herself, but it is Saturn and it's fear. With all this stellium in the first house, she wanted to be noticed, listened, and taken seriously. Stellium means conjunction of three planets and more, by the way. She will reach her own roots through the Aries sun. Actually, her Libra will needs balance and harmony in relationship. But Lord at first house, especially Saturn, caused her to act on base of fear. Unfortunately, debilitated planets cannot help her to get balance because they are fighting with their own nature. I mean, debilitated planets, weak planets. With her exalted sun, she always put herself first and act like a spoiled child. Second house, money, personal finance, possessions. Natal planet in second house tend to seek security through material world. Planet in the second house affect how people feel or think about money, playing, playing an important role in decision making and setting prior, priorities. Second house determined the native's financial situation, how to earn money, how to spend it. We can understand our relationship with the money by examining this house. As a succedent house, the role of this house is to support and strengthen what is started in the first house. We come into life in first house and rooted in the second house. We complete everything necessary to keep life going, sustaining ourselves with our talents. As we grow, we keep learning who we are through the positions that we want to have. Everybody hates me. We can see loaded second house with Mercury rulership. 
Mercury is also himself because it's the ruler of the ascendant. But it is with Pluto and debilitated Mars. This combination makes things difficult a little bit. Pluto is related with power and transformation, so it can be dangerous and destructive. It also causes fear to lose someone or something. This stellium shows the person's ambition to make money and how to match his identity with what he has. Mars represents his father because it's the ruler of the fourth house. So we can say he may have been raised under excessive pressure in his childhood, even bullying. This kind of situation describes his motivations to continue life. He was raised in a conservative family environment as a child. He didn't get a chance to express himself. They lived with grandfather and grandmother together. Someone who is not confident will make extraordinary effort to prove himself or withdraw completely. Either way, planets will work with their shadows for a while. He thinks that everybody dislikes him and going behind him. He said the people he worked with are bad. These kind of dark thoughts are coming from his childhood, actually. When I asked him if there was a reward and punishment system while he was growing up, he said his grandfather has been punished him with his belt sometimes. Pluto-Mars combination explained this situation, so these traumatic memories are directly related to the value that person gives to himself. That's why he thinks that everybody is an enemy to him. They want to destroy him. With the locomotive moon, he immediately leaves the job he finds. Time to time, he has a problem with making money. He can afford his own expenses and never takes money from his wife. But the expenses of the house and children are paid by his wife from the beginning of marriage. Another example here. She was uh, working as director of finance in a company. She was completely in charge of finance. We can see the money houses are prominent in the chart, second house and eight houses. There is the old aspect, which is Apex Pluto, is located in the second house. Also, Sun is the ruler of the second house in this chart. The yacht aspect pattern can create events, incidents, or relationship, but that occurs in a person's life, not, on, not out of their choices. Generally, the person doesn't have much control over what can occur, and it can be negative or positive. This pattern takes place between Sun, Angular, Saturn, and Pluto. We know Angular planets are important role in the chart, remember? As an Aries, she had total control of the company. Everyone respected her. She was actually the person running the company behind the boss. She decided what to pay and where to invest. Of course, the most dangerous part of Aries that acting without thinking has done great things for her too. She started to use company account for her own business with the thought of putting it back anyway. But actually, the amount of money she took cannot afford with her salary. Pluto in second refers ambition. Her boss's ex-partner deceived her that they can do a profitable business together. That partner took the money and got lost. She got caught cash deficit. She lost everything she had earned in her life and her family's properties also. She lost her reputation. We see here debilitated Venus conjunct MC. In addition to that Saturn, the ruler of the eighth house, in conjunct Pluto causes a struggle with fears that complicated her life. We observe poor decisions and ambition. She identified her own identity and social status with what she had. She paid the price for her greed and she trusted herself much with exalted son. Third house, sibling, neighbors, short trip, primary school, communication, transportation, local community, neighborhood, speaking, teaching, writing, gestures, body language. 
The third house is known as a cadent house. These houses are far from angles. In other words, they are the first house to fall from the angles or they are the last one to reach the angles. Therefore, they are considered bad houses. In cadent houses, we need to adapt something new, something far away from us. Everything that is started needs to be adjusted according to the new era and need. These houses are important in this respect. Third house is related with information. It refers how we communicate, how we interact with our environment, siblings, how we organize our thoughts. We filter what is going on in the outside world through this house and we transfer our thoughts to the outside through this house. Example, I've never seen another person in my life who can lie so much and get rid of these lies so easily, her boss said once. She was a businesswoman who worked enthusiastically and passionately to get to the place she dreamed of with a combination of Pisces, Leo and Scorpio. Mercury is in Aquarius in Angular 7th house. She has an impressive personality, by the way. Whatever she put in her head, she, will, she would have got it. She started from scratch and built herself, herself a million dollar media company. Her chart's locomotive planet is Pluto here and located in the third house. And Pluto is the dispositor of her moon. She is driven by Moon Mercury Square. Hence, they both are located in angular houses. They are crucial role in her life. In fact, the same theme is emphasized by Pluto's settlement in third house. I've observed that sometimes her ambition work in a self-destructive way. It comes from very hidden places. It's difficult to find peace between heart and mind. Being successful and rich was her goal. We see two generation planets in her third house. She would do anything possible until she got what she wants, including lying and cheating. Little corrections on papers or bribe someone are normal things in her ethic code. In everyday life, she manipulates people even on unnecessary matters. Before starting her own company, her boss used that phrase about it in her annual evaluation report. Remember, planets connect the houses they rule to the house they are located. Third house ruler Mercury is in seventh house. Com communication is very important for her relationship. We can also say that her ability to convince comes from this combination. Even her marriage served a purpose. There was a map in itself. On the other hand, we see the effect of Uranus in finding solution in difficult situations. She was incredible talent in getting out of crisis. Of course, Mars helps Mercury from MC to improve her career. Her eighth house sun in conjunct her third house Uranus. Her creative thinking style sometimes, sometimes caused her to take unnecessary financial risks. When it comes to the sibling symbolism of this house, she has always protect, protect her younger sister and helped her in her career. She started a company for her little sister and helped her to grow it. However, the relationship always continues as an awkward piece. They've been fighting for a while, and they've made up again. She has always preferred to live in the uh, estates where the richest businessmen live. Ambition. Yes, fourth house, father, home, family, family roots, property, and ancestry. The private sphere of life, not known in public, childhood memories. It's the other angular house, Fourth house is the house we grow up. It contains our childhood memories. It's the shelter that we come and rest when we fight outside and get tired. When we get home, we take out our uh, take take our clothes off and relax. This is home. 
this area can be dangerous if we keep ourselves here too long because every morning we have to get up back from here to social life. If we stay here too long, it might be hard for us to get back up again. If the battlefield is empty, the fourth house is the bunker where we are healed. Although our spirit wants to stay here, career and society calls us to themselves. This dilemma might be challenging. We must understand the theme that occurs in this house well in order to achieve our mission to contribute to society. This place represents our roots in which we build our lives. These roots of strong strong the roots of strong tree should grow in a nutritious soil so this area also symbolizes the wealth that lies in our roots the hidden mind that we have as soon as sun reaches the midnight it starts to new journey immediately that's why it represents endings and beginnings of all things this house also represents property example she is Mercury and besieged in Saturn and Neptune in fourth house. With Mercury, uh, retro Mercury, one's ability to think and perceive is influenced by internal dynamics. It's in this example, it's already in a very personal and private house and with malefics. It's difficult to speak her real thought with retro Mercury, and sometimes it causes disconnection from others. This Mercury with Neptune makes the situation worse and makes her delusional and depressive with Saturn. She grew up in a very conservative family. She witnessed her father being violent to her mother. They live their lives according to religious traditions. Jupiter is the locomotive planet of the chart, uh, chart uh, while he is the ruler of the fourth house and opposed to stellium in the fourth house. This place, placement increases her unconscious, dark and depressive thoughts. At age of 17, her dreams begin to worsen and she had nightmares. She ran away from home at the age of 19. She was found in the, in the hospital once with deep cuts in her hands. She was raped while hitchhiking, grabbed the knife with her hands and tried to stop the rape. Uranus makes home unstable for her and forced her to run away. She feels that home's, home is unusual in every way. She painted her room black and red during these days and googled schizophrenia and started to read Dostoevsky. Capricorn stellium is not easy to carry. It's dark and it's the middle of the winter season and says, what if summer will never come? It's Capricorn. When we think that fourth house is the midnight, fourth house planets are the planets that carry and reflect the characteristics of midnight. They work under the surface. As a Mercury, she besieged by dark, fearful, delusional, and rebellion energy. Every time she closed her eyes, these energies appeared in her eyes. When the transiting Pluto conjunct her Uranus, she committed suicide at 20 years old and died. Another fourth house example. With an exalted sun in third house and Gemini ascendant, she's very talkative and likes to talk about herself. In this chart, both ascendant and fourth house are ruled by Mercury that is located in the fourth house. It's in its domicile. Very strong Mercury, I mean. She has two sisters and their father left home when she was in high school. When his father left, he said to her, since she was working, she will take care of her sisters from now on. This is the burden from her father that she has been carried until her 15s. Her mother also made her taking care of the family, saying that she couldn't send her sisters private school because of her. In other words, her mother made her feel guilty about it. She took care of her mother and her sisters very long time. 
Pluto in the fourth refers a childhood full of hidden agendas and power struggles. As a young child, she was pressured by the burden of a family. A father is supposed to take care of children, not the other way around. But this situation was normalized by making her to feel guilty. This is exactly Pluto's situation. She was manipulated by her parents. After she got married and have a baby, she moved to abroad. She wanted to leave the country so that she can keep her distance from her family. Fourth house also represents the property. As she has exalted ruler of the fourth house, she has three different houses. She is very good at buying and selling, by the way. Fifth house, children, pleasure, activity, romance, dating, creativity, sports, hobbies, speculations, drama, cre creative self-expression. Life is hard and full of obstacles most of the time. We need happy moments to steal from life. It's like breathing a little, surfacing and inhaling oxygen. This is the fifth house. When you are in love, you can feel the time has stopped and it feels that you live in a dream. When you're in love, there is no title, no money, no nothing, just love. That's pleasure. Or imagine yourself on the stage after you perform, all the audience give you standing ovation. That's the pleasure too. The fifth house is Leo's house. In other words, when you wake up every morning, if you cherish the life and live the day spontaneously, it's joy and every children lives their lives spontaneously. Then you can overcome limits and free the mind, creativity begins. That's why love, child, and creativity are the symbolism of this house. Let's continue with an example. I will never, will I never have a boyfriend in my life? That's the question, big question. We always focused on love with our readings. Family or career had never uh, bothered her so much. She always felt the lack of love in her life wanted to get married and to be a mother. She begins a relationship with a great excitement, but ends up with disappointment. We see empty fifth house here. The ruler of the fifth house is the key. It's Saturn and it's debilitated. Same rule here. Debilitated planets make some difficulties where they are located regarding the house they rule. As soon as she got married some years ago, she knew he was the wrong person and got divorced. After that, her relationship with the person who cheated on her and got her pregnant ended in pain. It took about two years of her to recover herself. Cardinal Grand Cross doesn't help the situation. She has such a great yearning for a relationship. That's why she can ignore the clues easily. Her other relationship didn't last as long and he left, leaving a sense of worthlessness. Saturn shows us where we have to grow up and take responsibility. But her lessons are not so easy. Saturn teaches by restricting, preventing, and delaying. And it's debilitated Saturn, double difficulties. Angular Saturn in Cancer dis desperately wants to build a home. She wants a child to nurture, give her love and attention. The need for security is very high for her. Actually, she has to work on how to express her feelings and care for, own, uh, care for her own real emotional needs in this life. Even she wants to be a mother desperately, she had to have an abortion, even though she didn't want to. I think it's the paralyzing fear caused by Saturn. Even if the house is empty, what that house represents can become the most important problem of our lives. We see how debilitated ruler of empty house can be very dramatic in the life. That Saturn makes her want a child and romance in this life, but not strong enough to give it to her. Six house, service providing, service oriented, servants, lower position, employee. 
people working for you, health issue, diet, hygiene, habits, daily routines, small animals and pets. This house ranks second in the bad houses category. The planets that have settled in this house are considered under stressed and overwhelmed. This house symbolizes our daily responsibilities, not our career, career but the service we give. Sixth house is what the ancients called the slave houses. It represents the people who serve us serve us. Since this house comes after the fifth house, our hobbies and creativities need, need to specialize in this house. Love may not be sustainable. Children need to be guided. So this house symbolizes our responsibilities in life. What we must do to something properly to perfect or not to fail. These resources that we have to do that in the best way are the planets in this house. And how to do that is the sign here. Somewhere in life, we have to adjust our style to the situation we need. This house symbolizes our personal problems so that we can perfect ourselves, ourselves so that we can work on our mistakes so we can provide the most efficient versions of our service. Our most important duty and responsibility is actually to our body. Maybe that's why this house is also house of disease. If we don't fulfill our responsibility to our body, we will be sick. Although our approach to life is determined by the ascendant, the cusp of the sixth house shows how things will come across in our daily life. So no matter what we plan, this house shows us the problem in daily routine. And the planets here are the keys to our ability to deal with them. Let's go with example, desire to control. A very demanding, self-centered and ambitious personality with a combination of Leo, Scorpio and Aries. She likes to show herself in the foreground. She had a boyfriend who, had pay, who paid for her when she was studying in college out of town. She had to return home immediately after class because her boyfriend called her from her phone. There was no cell phone these days. Otherwise, it was the cause of the fight. There is Lib Libra Stadium in her sixth house. It was so important to her to be invited, liked, entertained in her teenage years that she could even sacrifice her own freedom for her relationship. Also, it was the Libra energy that enables her to fulfill her lover's request. Libra needs harmony. I was thinking that it was a kind of modern time slavery. Maintaining balance is the job of Libra and it's difficult to be in a harmony every second in a day. Remember, she's Scorpio and Jupiter, Venus, Uranus are in sixth house. She found a solution and invited her friends to home time to time so she could answer the phone when boyfriend called her. She wouldn't deprive herself of fun. After she graduated from college, she broke up with him and married again someone else who is wealthy. The main thing was the person with her has to be support her in every way, no matter what. Her seventh house ruler is in sixth house. When it comes to people who works with her, she's pretty meticulous. For example, she was putting pressure on her staff to organize their mailboxes. But in doing so, she approaches her employees as a mother or as a sister. She builds intimacy with them, organizes lunches and dinners and buying some gifts. She's trying to be loved by them. Time to time, her staff expressed that they were uncomfortable with the pressure she put on, even they liked her. We see her service-oriented person also. She was went to enroll the boss's son in schools abroad, buy new clothes for her boss, and even lend money from her savings. 
because of the ambition and anxiety about being an important person, we could actually see here how much unstable relationship established. Once you lend money to your boss, we cannot talk about the employee-employee relationship anymore. This is something else. In fact, we see the desire to impose her own system. Uh, this is a person who manages the working environment in a highly manipulative style. Scorpio is a manipulative sign, but Venus works as a manipulative planet here. Venus as a morning star wants to be noticed, wants to be satis satisfied no matter what. Libra is a sign keeping in balance. In this chart, what she really needs to realize who breaks the balance of given and taken in the relationship and what she gets as a result. Seventh house, marriage, partner, business partners, alliance, close friends, lovers, contracts, legal agreements, open enemies, rivals. The descendant, the descendant sign and planets occupying the seventh house show us how we select our partners and how we describe the partnerships and the relationship we seek. Often we are involuntarily attracted, attracted to people whose horoscopes carry a strong emphasis of the sign in our seventh house. This house shows the people mirroring us. The Northern Hemisphere is an area that we developed ourselves as an individual. Now we are moving our personality into the social arena with the seventh house. Generally, we reflect our seventh house planets to others. Then we confront these characteristics through others so that we have chance to balance it. Because it symbolizes the point where the sun is setting, the personality can slightly retreat. That's why public relations consultant, consultancy and relate, uh, related with them, uh, are related with this house. Examples. We see empty seventh house here. The ruler of the seventh is moon, conjunct angles. First of all, the debilitated Lord of the seventh house indicates that one's relationship will be challenging and this situation affects his reputation because it's MC. The person who had two marriages and two partnerships. After 15 years work, he decided to start his own company with one of his friends. Again, a seventh house friend, close friendships. After this partnership, he separated from his first wife, then married again. After some years later, his partner left the partnership, then his second wife walked away from his marriage. During all these years, his boss became like a family with him, 10th house Scorpio Moon. They were so close and he made a partnership with her later. She constantly nurtured and supported him. She pay, paid his debts, allowed him to live in her own house without paying anything. On the other hand, he was working with her as her advisor on personal matters. And when her husband neglected her, he was a moral support for her. When she has health situation, she was calling him instead of her husband. It went beyond the employer-employee relationship. It was a strange like mother-son or father-daughter relationship. We can see blended, awkward relationship with his boss. With Moon in the 10th house, the owner of the chart makes his career his home. He has directed his dreams and ambitions to nurture and grow his career. His real need is a partner who is caring and loving, but the position of the planets in MC indicates that he is very emotional and drawn into a dream and cannot see any real clues. To bring the, part, to bring the right partner is difficult for debilitated ruler, especially with Neptune. He actually fell in love with a dream every single time. 
The aggressive nature of the Moon-Mars opposition can be a very difficult energy for a Taurus to hold. For Taurus, this tension can be irritating. Fourth house son refers that home and family are important to him. He actually wants to create a place where he can escape from the outside world and hide. But opposition of Neptune moon and debilitated Mars conjunction cannot provide him with the safe home he longs for. Yes, the next house, eighth house, death. Other people's money, inheritance, loans, partners, assets, taxes, business, financial transactions, the occult, explore life after death, support from others, financial, physical, moral, spiritual, sharing money, transformation, regeneration, and sex. This house represents everything we buried, everything we don't want to face suppress are represent, represented by this house. It's a house associated not only with psychoanalysis, but also with money and sex. In other words, it represents theme that similar, seem dissimilar, money, sex, occult, and psychoanalysis. This house is actually the house of transformation, is the house where we intense emotions are represented. The eighth house is actually a journey we make for ourselves as the getaway to underground. Here we have to face our own darkness and transform them. Just the diver who descends each inch by inch underwater to avoid being crushed, we need, we need to go into our own darkness, confront and transform it in the same way. Otherwise, to be crushed will be in inevitable. Those who can survive the eighth house can only be the guru of life in the ninth house. Yes, they were wealthy family uh, who were importing from abroad. When she talks about that days, she says if the things weren't placed the way she wanted them to be, she would get angry and yell at the servants. They went bankrupt overnight due to the rise in exchange rates. The bank confiscated everything, including the house they lived in. She was in a very difficult situation with her two children. She describes those days as a great distraction. We see Uranus in here, eight house, sudden change in shared money. One day, while she was alone in desperation, thinking about what to do, she met someone and her journey began. From that day on, she started to deal only with energy and mysticism. She confronted herself and was ashamed of her old spoiled behavior. She has been doing spiritual counseling ever since. We see loud loaded eight house when Pluto in there we need to discover ourselves again and defeat our demons Pluto is the symbol of darkness and it needs to bring the darkness into the surface when the Uranus in here we learn this process very quickly even if we don't accept it it Uranus is the unpredictable planet the planet in here generally active when the crisis times Uranus wants us to be free, independent, to express different parts of our qualities. The sudden change in her financial situation with these planets in eighth house put her in a psych psychological process and made her change. That's the transformation of the person came with money crisis. Mars in eight makes her keep going it gives her power to endurance to survive especially mars is here wants to know about what's going on with her and how to survive mars makes her to connect with her deep roots she currently makes her living by providing spiritual consultancy another eight house example her mother was very angry and yelled at her all the time, according to her story. She has a son from an unhappy marriage. After retirement, she went to public education courses, 
since she had sex issues with her ex-husband, wanted to understand the cause of these problems. She started out as a sex therapist to help others. Neptune is a very sensitive planet, especially in 8th house. This Neptune wants her to combine soul with the partner and has no boundaries. It wants to, it wants to lose herself in relationship. In this case, it's very clear that she has big disappointments about marriage and sex. We see Neptune as part of the Grand Cross here. This energy makes her self-deception and being attracted to abusive relationships. Since the sun represents identity, it wouldn't be wrong to say that identity is suppressed in the eighth house. As a child, consistently getting scolded and beaten by the mother is a sign of this. The identity development of the person takes place through the house where the sun is located. In this example, we see that after divorce, she tried to discover herself through sex. With the Sun-Mercury conjunction in this house, her curiosity is directed and specialized in the unknown and taboo area. The Aquarius Ascendant already shows us that one's approach to life will be unusual and rebellious. Next house, ninth house, religion, law, spiritual belief, values, ideals, philosophy, faraway places, long distance, travel, adventure, higher education, university education, aspirations, dreams for the future or prophetic dreams, fame, publishing, advertising. The ninth house represents the area where our mind opens to different horizons. When this field is triggered, our life and most importantly, our mind expands. Ninth house indicates the area where we break uh, our habits. It rules the higher education because this house seeks the truth of nature, truth of universe. It represents the curiosity of the other cultures. It represents mass media, broadcasting, thinking big. We learn from our experiences in this house. This is an adventure house. Example, I want my life to have a purpose. She is the daughter of a very wealthy family. She has never had money problems in her life. She lives in very expensive houses and drives expensive cars. Everything she wants is provided instantly. I think a significant majority of the population work to earn money living. Uh, this may be the case on the materialistic approach, but our souls also need nourishment in this life. In this example, we see an unhappy person who married her college sweetheart at a very early age. Her husband works with her father in her father's company. Many years she cannot tell him her feelings about um, her because he uh, treated her so well and caring. She had a lover during her last years of marriage. She vacillated for a long time between her lover and her husband. It took three years to tell him that she wants to divorce. In the ninth house, our mind needs to evolve with the experience we have had. She was going to fashion design school to get a job at that time and worked as an assistant to a designer for a while. She was dealing with something made her happy, but she still couldn't find the purpose she was looking for. She decided it wasn't the ambition. In this case, unfortunately, this development comes after a crisis. Ninth house is the house that comes after the eighth house. All the years she was in a relationship, she was suffering with guilt and pangs of remorse. We can see her loaded eighth house lies in there with Mercury. She has to find out her deep shadows. For example, she was obsessed with being thin and was in therapy because of it. Her anorexia turned out to bulimia. In that process, she diagnosed brain tumor and had a brain surgery. That was big shock for her. 
personal development cannot be in joy and abundance. The crisis destroys, the crisis destroys us and we are faced with the reality of death. However, after such an experience, we believe in divine being greater than us and being to pray to him, we develop our belief to, lie, to live. After surgery, she got divorced, separated from boyfriend. Her father gave her a new job in their company. Now she's still in rotation. She doesn't feel that lost, but still not satisfied. The sign in the ninth house doesn't show us what and how we should believe in life. It shows how we process our beliefs. Her ninth house cusp is air sign Libra. She should be able to share and discuss her beliefs and life approach with others, but she prefers to hide her identity and words with her eight house planets. Tenth house, the mother, place of authority, the boss, the manager, statue, fame, reputation, public life, career and ambition, the fruit of our labor, the outcome. Tenth house starts with MC. The sun culminates at this point. After this point, the sun starts to decrease gradually. If we apply this theme to our lives, it symbolizes the highest point we can reach in life within our own limits. It's our MC. The planet that conjunct uh, MC will definitely be noticed by the society, for better or worse, and we have to deal with this image. It shows the contri contribution we make to the society with the personality we have developed and tested. It's our outcome. Examples. Someone who had troubled childhood, the father hasn't been in their lives for a long time, while he was away, he asked for money from her, although not very voluntarily, she did give some help. Having had a difficult childhood, she displaced an extremely ambitious and demanding personality. Scorpio stellium stands out on her chart. Pluto in the 10th house is very good at sen sensing power struggles and hidden agendas. The chart owner spent many years of her life trying not to be a victim. She tried all kinds of jobs just to stay on her feet. She couldn't fully understand what she liked or what she wanted to be. Just try to survive. She's also someone who is not afraid to use her sexuality when she wants to get someone. Scorpio is very passionate and always wants more. Themes of jealousy and greed can sometimes cause the person to be drowned in relationships that hurt. When it comes to careers, witnessing oppression put her in all or nothing situation, regardless, regardless of whether the goal she sets is right or wrong. She jumped in relationship and she experiences disappointments and pain. Being in a relationship and having her wishes done was her only reality at a certain time in her life. She left her job to follow her lover to everywhere during last years. When Leo's desire and Scorpio's ambition are combined, a person can become a ruthless, demanding person. Another example. This chart owner was working as a manager in a big pharmaceutical company. Ever since I got to know her, she has always been at office day and night. And when she was just in her 30s, her father had a stroke and was confined to bed. Since her father was very important to her, she devoted herself to her family. Although she had an older and younger brother, she was the backbone of the family. For more than 10 years, they took care of their father. She worked until late on weekdays and met the needs of family on weekends. All these years, her life had been just work and family. She didn't attend friends' meetings on the weekends, saying family needs or business reports as an excuse. 
her life was starting to become a full task. We can see retrograde planets conjunct MC. Virgo MC appreciates discipline, precise and order. Her profession also fits quite well with the Virgo symbolism. She was the director of quality control at the pharmaceutical company. When it comes to retro Mars, we can talk about an inner anger that has difficulty finding the ground to emerge. Mars is the planet that hates retrograde the most as the planet of action and self-expression, of course. Mars usually wants to move forward, but retro Mars acts like a car with the handbrakes on. She wants to travel as an Aquarius and Sagittarius rising, but her responsibilities moon Capricorn and duty called every time. She knew very well how to reach her goals with the Earth Grand Trine in her chart, how to be successful and practical, how to earn money and own property. She has house, three or four house, I don't remember how many, and Loden Bank account, but she has no time to travel and have dinners. After her father died, she took care of her mother another 10 years. After two years from her mother's death, she died of cancer last year. She devoted herself, career and family. 11th house, France associates groups, organizations, social and political awareness, conditional love because the fifth house is unconditional love. Eleventh house, opposing house is conditional love, goals, hopes, wishes. In the area where we join the groups and the reaction we get from there, since this place comes after the tenth house, it's the people who support our career and accompany us on our way. They are our friends with a common goal. This is the house where collaboration and shared visions, all kinds of activities are included here, where everyone is contributing effort to a goal. The main point of this house, how we grow and actualize our true selves. We have fun with the group and we are happy to see the fruit of our work by pursuing a common goal. The planet in this house was born from the horizon, freed from the burning rays of the rising sun and move towards the culmination. For this reason, it's a lucky and auspicious house. Whatever you do, you hurt me. Example, she takes care of her friends. When they have a problem, she immediately forgets her own problems and tries to find a solution to them. The problem here is that she can't set the help dose correctly. If her solution is not accepted, she goes crazy. The stellium here, Saturn is the ruler of third. Uh, the stellium is here, uh, wants to impose her opinion on friends. Since she knows her friends' weak points and secrets, she reveals it and confronts them in public. A very close childhood friend once said that, uh, quote, that quote, whatever you do, you hurt me. Each group has its own dynamic and quote. Every member actually knows this quote and acts accordingly. When Pluto is in there, it seems this quote doesn't fit. The key point is here, we have to adjust our future goal according to the group and volunteer to cooperate with the rest of the group. When we can achieve this, we will realize that we have the power to transform ourselves with the groups. We see her as someone who reveals herself in friendship and passionately defends them. She is a person who is ready to save someone at any moment, desires to be a hero in groups. When she thinks someone in the group is enemy, she ruthlessly excludes those. Another example of this stereotype, she was upset with a middle-aged woman. She didn't confront her directly this time, but later on, 
While talking to her daughter, the girl turned against her mother and went to fight with her mother. This is Pluto Mars behavior. This stellium is apex of T square, which also includes Venus in eighth house. Since Venus tends to be overly dramatic and anxious and intense in a relationship, it describes the dramatic events she experiences in groups. Even in the middle of the night, she can jump in her car and confront that person when she obsesses. Moon is the opposed planet in this T-square. Subconsciously, she tends to take the relationship to a non-return point just to see if it survives or breaks, just to see how far the partner is willing to go, how much they love her, how committed they are. Ironic part of this combination is that she is suffering fear of losing someone. Nowadays, she's trying to confront herself by making psychological interpretations of Shakespeare's works. She likes to increase her creativity by mirroring with theater groups. If I don't engage in society, I cannot produce anything, she says. I love Londonists. I need it, but I have to be with society to produce something, she added. Last house, 12th house. A difficult house, hidden things, secret enemies, long-term health issue, confinement, prisons, hospitals, disappointments, frustrations, places of seclusion, isolation, private space away from society, become a reckless, self-sabotage, self-defeating behavior, self-undoing. We can understand and work our own deepest fears by looking at this house. Unless we take care of this house and the planets here voluntarily, it can be shown as the source of self-harm. All that is concealed, including the disastrous secrets, are the matter of this 12th house. Hidden activities, illegal work, unlaw situations, and classified information are categories that are affected by the 12th house. Example, he is very ambitious, hardworking and rebellious young man. He works as a manager in a pharmaceutical company. He sets very high goals for himself and fears rejection. He wants everything to be perfect. For example, weight, appearance, car, house, education, these are very important for him. So he was doing gym by taking muscle building drugs. He has been in active business life for only five years, but he wants to reach the top position in the company as soon as possible. And he's pushing the conditions for this. We see loaded 12th house. Besieged Mercury may be very restricted in function and will be lessened in that configuration. In a pessimistic sign like Capricorn, the situation can become even more complicated. He idealizes authority figures with his Capricorn stellium in 12th house, especially Sun Neptune conjunction increases this theme. He admires his father when he is in constant conflict with his mother. While he is planning to buy very expensive gifts for his father on his mother's birthday, he is not even there and can pass it off by asking his mother, do you want me to buy a book for you? Subconsciously, it will make him more happy if his mother was a senior manager or CEO at a big company. His mother is retired from a public institution. He finds her weak and ordinary, deep down. He may be angry at his mother for not caring enough about him as a child. He was actually raised by his grandmother. In fact, she has established an emotional bond with his grandmother, not with his mother. We see planets in 12 halves opposing moon, and Mars stays in 12th house as the planet representing mother. Neptune-Sun conjunction 
on the other hand, points to idealize the father. In fact, there are many processing themes that he doesn't face and doesn't want to face running in the background. He is unaware of the pressure he puts on himself and what he does to people around him. He is not aware of how this attitude and behavior hurt his mother. He wants to control and power. The fact that Plato and Saturn conjunct MC, conjunct with angles in chart, increases this theme quite a lot. Prestige and public appearance are so important. He even has a list of criteria for his girlfriend, hair, eye color, weight, education, job, etc. Four years ago, he was diagnosed with lymphatic cancer. We can see 12th house as an example of chronic disease house. He beat the cancer thanks to a diagnosis at early stage and as a result of one year of chemotherapy. Yet he still has an obsession with his hair and weight. Maybe he's not taking muscle building drugs this time, but he's taking some drugs to make his hair grow thicker. In this year's Saturn cycle, he moved from his parents' house to his own rental. Yes, I think we cover all houses. Here, I want to list the relevant reference books for those who are interested. Here is my contact information if you want to ask anything regarding what we talked today. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you all next time. Thank you.